What's up guys, Matt here. You've been looking to buy a house or a condo, right? A primary residence? Well, like the genius you are, you always have an investment property in the back of your mind. And you wanna make sure you got a good deal. I mean, why overpay for anything? So you're thinking about this house as a potential investment in the future. Buy it as a primary residence, get a good deal, and then move out and find new renters to take over. Rinse and repeat. There are plenty of investors who've done this over time. Investors that have built empires with this strategy. So the question is, what do I look for when buying a primary residence? How do I know it's gonna be a good investment? You are in the right place, my friend, and by that I mean this video. Speaking of this video, why don't you go ahead and smash that like button as hard as you can to help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's get after it. Number one on today's list is to really examine the neighborhood. The neighborhood in which you buy will determine the type of tenants that you attract. If you buy in a rundown area, you may increase your chances of a high vacancy rate. The highest cost of owning a rental is vacancy. Avoid it like the plague. If you buy in a college town or near a university, you're just asking for students to be your tenants. And while it's your primary home, you're gonna have to deal with these youngsters taking over the pool, partying, into all hours of the night. If students do become tenants in the future, you're looking at summers where they're gone and this is gonna be filled with vacancy. So get some eyes on the property and drive the neighborhood before you purchase. That way you can get a sense of who will most likely be your future tenants. This will give you a leg up when preparing to market the property so you know who's the right audience when you're getting ready to lease the property. Next up is to determine the property taxes. Here in Austin, they are climbing through the roof every year. Tragically, I've seen investors sell properties that they've owned for years because the rental rates could not keep up with the amount that the taxes were going up. But there's hope here in Texas. Investing in the suburbs like Round Rock, Kyle, Hutto, Buda, have become a way for investors to get into other markets with paying lower taxes. Property taxes vary pretty widely, so you wanna be aware of how much you may be losing. High property taxes are not always a bad thing. For example, a great neighborhood that attracts long-term tenants can have pretty high taxes, but there can be crappy areas that have high taxes as well. You can find all the property tax info on the county appraisal website, and the MLS will show you projections when the property is listed. If possible, find out if property tax increases are probable within the next year. A town in financial distress may hike taxes far beyond what a landlord can charge in rent. A benefit to buying a primary residence in Texas is that you can file a homestead exemption. I'm sure all states here in the US have something very similar. This will prevent the county from increasing your taxes every year more than a certain amount. Number three is the schools. This is extremely important to me as a father. Look into the public schools that are zoned for the neighborhood that you're specifically looking into. If they have great schools, you'll be attracting families that are looking for great schools for their kids to succeed in. And your likelihood of having long-term tenants greatly increases. Having good schools in the area will really come into play if and when you decide to sell the property. If there are no good schools nearby, it can negatively affect the value of your investment property. Fourth on the list is a biggie for your investment and for your family, crime. No one, including you, wants to live next door to a hotspot of murderers and rapists. You can look this info up online pretty easily. Check the rates for vandalism, serious and petty crimes. And don't forget to know if criminal activity is on the rise or declining. Ask your realtor about anything that you may or may not need to know and see if the neighborhood is gated or not. Now, let's talk about the job market. Here in Austin, the job market is absolutely booming. So buying anywhere in Austin is probably going to be a long-term safe bet. But looking at specific areas is always a good idea. For example, the Tesla factory is in East Austin in a small suburb called Del Valley. I bet those neighborhoods will be perfect for some of the 5,000 employees that are gonna be working there. Locations with more employment opportunities are gonna attract more tenants. Read the news, look for any type of signs that are talking about major companies or employers moving to a certain area. Employees in search of a place to live will flock there. This may cause housing prices to go up, but you gotta get in while you can. Maybe refinance later, who knows? Even for tenants that don't work for said company, think like this. If you want that company in your backyard, your renters will as well. Number six is the amenities. 
Now, when you think of amenities, I'm sure that you think of an apartment complex. So if you buy a condo, the amenities may be a better draw for you and potential tenants. All of these are great selling points for renters. So tour the neighborhood, even check out restaurants close by or other convenient perks. The next on the list is crucial, future development. The municipal planning department will have info and development news on properties that have already been zoned for particular areas. If there's a lot of construction going on, it is probably a good growth area. However, there could be new developments that actually might hurt the price of surrounding properties. For example, if a dump or a water waste facility is next door, the smell might drive away landlords, potential renters, and you as the homeowner won't like it either. Additionally, housing development could increase the price of your home. But these properties might compete with your property in terms of the renter pool. Number eight is to make sure to look at the amount of listings and vacancies. If properties have been listed on the market for a while and there's a lot of vacancies, it could be an indicator that this is a bad area. Low vacancy rates mean that demand is high and it will allow landlords to increase the rates over time. Number nine seems a bit obvious, rental income. This will be your bread and butter, so you need to know the area's average rent. You could do some research on this, or you could ask your realtor to run some rental cops on the MLS. Make sure any property that you consider can bear enough rent to cover the mortgage, taxes, and any other property expenses. An easy way to calculate this is called the 1% rule. For example, a property at 300,000 purchase price that would bring in 1%, which is 3,000 in rent, can easily cover the taxes, mortgage expenses, and you'll be able to rake in some extra cash. Research the area well enough to gauge where it might be heading in the next five years. If you can afford the property today, but the taxes are expected to increase, that increase could sink you later on down the road. Last but not least, you should determine if the area frequents natural disasters. Insurance is another cost that you will have to account for, so you need to know entirely how much it will cost. If an area is prone to earthquakes or flooding, the insurance costs could be double or triple what they typically would be. This expense can and will eat away at your rental income. Not to mention, if a disaster does happen, there will be massive costs related to repairs, maintenance, and getting it back up to condition. These, my friends, are the 10 things to look for when buying a primary. Write these down or refer back to this video when you are looking at houses. You are ready to buy a perfect home for you and for future tenants. And who knows, things could change. You could love this property and wanna stay there forever, or maybe you decide to sell. But the main thing is, you got the options. You'll be able to go to sleep at night knowing that you got a good investment and could make some good money on a monthly basis if you wanted to. So I have a question for you. What are your questions? I know I didn't cover every detail today, so you've gotta be thinking of something. Comment below and we'll make sure to get back to you. There is no such thing as a dumb question. We are all learning here. Thanks again for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and I can't wait to see you again in the next video.